One of the first things I often hear after finishing tuning a system is, wow, that was fast, that didn't take very long, or you were flying on the keyboard and smart, that was crazy. It's because I've done this a lot, I'm comfortable with the tools and underlying concepts, but I know how to use the built-in keyboard shortcuts to my advantage to get to where I wanna go quickly. I'm not rushing, I'm not glossing, I'm officially getting to where I want to go. It takes a little bit of practice, but today I'm gonna to show you with one hand how to move like a ninja within Smart when actively tuning. And then after capturing a little bit of data, we're gonna use a few more shortcuts that actually require two hands to know how to manipulate data and compare and make decisions quickly. So this is for you if you've probably been through the level one course and are familiar with the layout of the software, how FFTs work. Um, actually got this neat t-shirt from going up to Connecticut to hang out with the Rational Crew a few weeks ago. Had a great time. But all that being said, today is not explaining how smart works, but how to drive the car faster and more efficiently once you're actually in the field. So my setup today is just a single speaker and a single microphone. There's no DSP, no processor, no console, keeping it very simple. But we're gonna be taking a few measurements and seeing how I would actually drive and look at and analyze the speaker in real time with the keyboard shortcuts and moves I'm actually making. Okay, let's jump right in. So this is from factory default, and the only thing that I've changed is created this transfer function of my mic channel and channel one, and I'm using the loopback built, in, built into the interface uh, for my reference. So the mic is measurement, the loopback is my reference, right? And my signal generator, I've optimized to feed this speaker and turn it down to, to be a nice low level, but still coherent data, which I can get away with in my nice quiet studio right here. Okay, but everything else is, if you just reset defaults on smart is what you would get. So the first thing we need to do when we take a measurement is turn on the signal generator. You could click on and that does it, but you could just hit the G key. Again, driving with one hand, it's gonna be your left hand in this case, because I use my mouse with my right and my uh, keyboard with my left. And I'm going to do that. So hit G, turn the generator on. Little pro tip here, click on signal generator. You can have it fade in now in V9. So it takes 1.5 seconds. You can obviously change this, but this is a nice default. Uh, but I feel like it's a nice way to not scare people. <laughs> so turn on G. Ah, a nice smooth fade in and it won't, you know, make the lighting department mad at you when you are tuning. So that's what we need to get a stimulus signal or a pink noise signal running through our system to get our measurement. My microphone's placed here. I've already matched levels between my measurement and reference. So again, a lot of groundwork has been done. This is not a what is smart and how does it work, but how to drive the car well and efficiently. So step one, G for generator, generator, right? And then we need to sync up our reference signal with our measurement signal. So we do that either with the delay finder, which is pretty slow, so let me do that. And then I've inserted the, insert the delay and it's fine. It takes a, a little bit longer time because it has a longer FFT to search for the impulse response spike. But you could also use the delay tracker by clicking right there and it will do it quicker and snap to it. Let me show you that. So that was very fast for it to find it, or we could just use D to define the delay tracker. And in V9, it will automatically turn it off. It used to be where it, you would have to manually turn off the delay tracker, but now it does it automatically once it's confident that it's found it. So again, these two hotkey commands, G and D, I'll show you. I've now reset the delay here by zeroing it out. And now I'm gonna show you G then D to get a nice measurement. Okay, so I waited for my coherence to get better, for it to sync up. My averaging depth is at six because it's good to have this during tuning, so more averaging rejects noise. But you saw I had to wait a while for that to get uh, the coherence to get back to normal after I did the sync. The good thing is you can flush the averager. You can have it start with this brand new set of data, and I can do that immediately after I have the delay tracker set. So there's G, D, then V flushes the averager. So again, I'll zero out, start at the beginning. Here we are, G, D, V. Let 
great. So GDB and now have nice coherent data. Again, it's a quiet studio. I expect to see this and here is my data. Then I need to finally capture it. So that's GDV spacebar. I got to start from the beginning here. Great. So again, that was two, maybe three seconds to get that going. And now I have a capture of my little Fostex speaker right here. One more pro tip I'll show you with the signal generator, and then we'll talk about capturing and uh, data and comparing data, not just the active kind of tuning process or data gathering. Uh, I'm going to go back to signal generator here. I did click fade in, and now I'm going to do stop gen after capture. So that means I don't have to hit G again to stop it. It's going to assume that when I hit space bar to capture a measurement that you probably don't need the signal generator going anymore. So less pink noise bothering people in the room and less fatiguing your ears. And it's even faster. So one more time here, G, D, V, space bar, and then the generator is automatically going to turn off. I'll hide this guy. Auto gem. There we go. Now I've got this measurement. Okay, now let's do this where we're going to gather two more measurements where I'm going to move the microphone back a couple feet, do the same thing, capture it, move it back a couple feet, capture it, and we're going to see the level drop front to back. And then we'll move on to the data analysis shortcuts to start comparing those measurements. So going to do this in real time here. I've already captured our original Fostex. So I'm going to show him. And now I'm going to move the microphone, capture, move the microphone, capture. Great, so just calling this position two. Great. And as expected, we're going to see the data quality drop because it's fairly quiet here. There's more noise, more direct reverberant ratio going on. Um, so, but I can hit the Z key to cycle through all of these. And so I'm moving through. I see the level drop front to back. Data was best and most coherent with it being close. And I see it drop. Okay. So that's the Z key to cycle through data once you're comparing it. And then one of my favorite key, uh, kind of combinations, key commands in, in a click is to normalize the traces. So I'm going to hide this guy. And now I'm going to go to 1K. I'm going to shift. I'm going to click. And it snaps them all together. It does more or less a one octave weighting around where you clicked and normalizes all those traces. So I, I was looking at the, le the differences between them, the absolute differences, because I moved the microphone back, the level's going to drop. But if I'm just concerned, like, what is the tonal differences in my studio front to back, I can start to see some really interesting things. So here's my reference for what it was nice and close. But then I see with this guy, oh, wow, there's a huge dip <laughs> uh, right here. And that's probably a room mode of sorts. And there's another one right here. It could be a floor bounce. There's lots of different things that could go on and start to investigate here. But that's cool. By and large, I can see that the response of the speaker stays very similar in the top end as I'm moving it back because it's not near a subject to room anomalies because of the wavelengths being much shorter and being absorbed here in the room. So we've talked about Z to cycle through the data to see it. We've talked about shift click to normalize the data. But let's say I'm going to go back and look at the, the um, level drop front to back and see the absolute changes. I can reset my trace offsets because if we click here, uh, I see right here that it reduces by 1 dB. I can click here, increase it by 3.8 and then 7.3. So that gives me those offsets. But if I hit command Y or control Y, on Windows, I can put those back to normal and zero those out. And lastly, let's say I want to start over, capture some new measurements, but I don't want to see this anymore. I want to just clear my screen. It's going to be Shift Command H for hide. That hides all or Shift Control H if you're on a Windows machine. So Shift Control H, Shift Command H, and we have all the hidden. I can click here, start again, do one more measurement for you. And we are off to the races. Okay, 
So to recap here, our active tuning shortcuts, after we've verified everything, G turns the generator on, D selects the delay tracker, V resets the averager, we're gonna hit spacebar to capture, and we're gonna make sure we have our signal generator options where we fade it in so we don't scare people. And secondly, we stop the signal generator after capture to save our ears and be less annoying while we're tuning. And then we move on to our data analysis shortcuts. After we've captured it, how do we manipulate it and look at it? We would shift click to normalize the traces. If we wanna cycle through them, we can hit Z and move through it and we can see those in order right here. And then we have shift command H hides them. And if let's, it's still gonna show this last set of data from the active measurement. And I can hit V to reset my buffers and my averager and have that gone. All right, hope this gets you get a lot faster in smart. Again, go take their operator fundamentals class, get really familiar with the software, learn about FFTs, but if you wanna accelerate how you move it with it when you're actually applying it in the field, make sure and put these shortcuts to work. I would love to let you, uh, or I'd love for you to let me know below uh, what are some other uh, really cool workflows you figured out in Smart to move faster. I know there is a timer function, so how are you using that? My name is Michael Curtis. I want to get you the best results out of your sound system so it sounds great in every single seat. I'll catch you next time.